Alright, that's us going out live for first shot of Penn and Teller VR. Frankly, unfair, unkind, unnecessary and underhanded. That's the name of the game, that's not me uh, sweating it. It's pretty cool. So we're on the stage. Right, I've got my big magic hands. There's a height reference. It's Pen 6-6. Six, six. Uh, right, remember be aware of your surroundings at all times, stay in the centre, cleared the play area, and do not walk around. Alright, press T button to continue. Why am I so small? Oh, I have to stand. Calibration 101, Mr. Duet, stand 5 to 7 feet away from the camera, hold start to recenter, hold your arms out, squeeze both T buttons. Okay. So I'm pretty centered, but I'm tiny. <laughs> uh, oh man, I'm even smaller now. There we go, that's more like it. Grab main menu to start game. Grab a line any time. To reorient, that was weird. It just disappeared there. Okay. That's better. Nice, very cool. Grab main menu to start game, right? There we go. reader. Look how fast I can read. Nice. Accept. I'm ready to accept now. Hello, my name is Penn Gillette and this is my partner Teller. We are Penn and Teller. You are now in possession of a virtual reality game that is not a game. This is a virtual toolbox filled with frankly unfair, unkind, unnecessary, and underhanded ways to humiliate and baffle your friends. F you, 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 and you. <laughs> Virtually nothing in our virtual world is what it seems. The games are rigged, so you always win. The simulations end in embarrassment and tragedy for the player, so you can laugh while your friend screams. We give you cruel magic tricks disguised as cutting edge science and pranks that leave your victims with actual, not virtual, egg on their faces. Because while our world exists only as a simulation, with you added, the outcome for your loved ones will be real. Oh, very real. Now pay attention. If you're the kind of gamer who always skips the instructional parts because they're always stupid and you're way too clever to need them, You've got to think again with P-N-T-F-U-U-U and you. There's particular stuff you need to know that's specific to each bit. Let us teach you how to navigate the waters that we've so conscientiously filled with sharks. We are your virtual friends, out to help you destroy 
your real friends. <laughs> now that we've christened you as a member of the PNT crew, we'll take you to our backstage area to really get started. See that highlighted button on the screen? This button is your ticket to the backstage area we use to disguise all the tomfoolery. When you're ready, point one of your controllers at the button and press the trigger. We'll transport you backstage to continue our dastardly confab. See you soon. Nice. Hey, well, that's pretty. Good to see you. Cheers for tuning in. Uh, all right, we'll hit this then. Go backstage. Oh, I'm nowhere in the strap. Welcome to the virtual monkey room. It's a creepily accurate replica of the backstage lounge where we hang out with our friends after our Vegas shows. Here's where you'll get your training. And here's your menu of bits to choose from, all handcrafted and organically rendered by artisans with no moral center to allow you to plunge your friends into psycho-technological freefall. By the way, it's now time to let that friends thing go. They are marks that will play together. Think of them from now on collectively as the chump. Time to dive in. Enough of the mumbo jumbo. Let's give you a taste of how you are gonna practice a bit to pull off the swindle. Go ahead and select the highlighted button. Our bits fall into certain categories based off of how you want to bamboozle your chump. Go ahead and select the highlighted category to bring up a new series of bits. Presto changeo. Go ahead and select the highlighted bit. Once you've chosen the bit, here is where you can review the tutorial. You must do this if you haven't performed the bit before. You need to understand how to perform it, how to act, and any handy-dandy everyday objects you might need to gather before you wreck an unsuspecting chump. Go ahead, select the highlighted button, and we'll move this train along. It does look good, well, that's pretty. Um, so will I play it there or extend it? The bullet catch has killed more magicians than any other trick. It's even killed a few carnies. For real, killed them. So we never tried it till we worked out a method that made it safer than knitting. But even knowing that, even knowing it was totally safe, looking down the barrel of a 357 Magnum Colt Python revolver, wicked scary. So you tell your chump he's going to get the thrill of standing in for teller while Penn shoots a bullet at his mouth. But being virtual, absolutely safe. The chump's job is to snap his virtual teeth together just in time to stop the virtual bullet before it blows his virtual brains out. Won't that be fun? And you'll see it all from the point of view of Teller's tonsils. Step one, tell the chump to hand you one of their controllers. Take it from there. Walk across the room and hold it out in front of yourself. You will appear to be across the room standing by me in the game. Step two, start with a test shot. Explain that when the ring around the bullet turns green, that's their signal to pull the trigger. You'll then fire <laughs> three more bullets. Bang, bang, bang. Step three, after the third bullet, the gun will magically float in the air, making the chump believe you're still holding the gun and allowing you to secretly approach them. Meanwhile, in virtual space, they see you across the room holding a virtual shotgun. They think they know where you are, but now you're close enough to scare them to death. <laughs> and you're going to. When the countdown hits zero, the shotgun will fire. And you grab the chump just as the shotgun blast would hit. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> For a second, Virtual will get real, and they'll scream like they're the first person to really be shot with a shotgun in VR. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. <laughs> <laughs> Too easy, right? Since you've watched the video, we want to throw you into the mix to help you really sell that sweet, sweet payoff. 
where your chump steps in shit. <laughs> I totally will, that's pretty. The chocolates video is really good. Uh, so do I want to close this then? Selecting so the chumps view option plays a modified version of the bit. This puts you in the role of the chump, so you can experience the bit from their perspective. Think of it like practice. Alright. Whoa. <laughs> Look down. This is virtual reality and anything is possible. Let's put you in a place you'd never want to be in real life. Let's put you inside Teller's mouth for your version of our version of the magic bullet. Maybe you've heard of it. The most dangerous act in show business. It's a classic of magic. In our version, Teller and I ostensibly pretend to fake catch totally real bullets in our for reals, no kidding teeth. We've done that absolutely real looking but completely phony trick in our Vegas show for decades. And we're a little tired. So how would you like to take over? We'll sit back on our virtual butts while you do the bullet catching. And we'll let you use Teller's teeth. You can have any friend you want do the shooting. Hand them on your controllers now. You'll experience everything in slow motion on our virtual Vegas stage until you get good enough for our real-time Vegas version. Watch carefully. When the bullet is just the right distance from you, use your controller trigger to snap Teller's teeth <laughs> safely around the bullet. Here we go. Ready, aim, fire! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the cheer whiles, by the way. Well, that's pretty. Oh, my teeth are getting destroyed, like. Yeah. Oh, oh, great job, boss. You're way beyond us. We think you're ready to do something that nobody, not even Penn and Teller, have ever tried. The bullet catch with a shotgun. You ready? You better focus. It'll take <laughs> lightning reflexes to catch all these pellets. Catch this. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, got your training in your head? Got your real props hidden there in your entertainment center? <laughs> Ready to harvest you some chump? Then slap that VR hat on your former loved one's face and F you, 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 and you then. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Right, we try another one. The virtual Rochambeau. And go for that. Y'all know rock, paper, scissors, also called Rochambeau. Tell your chump it's even easier and fairer to play in VR. You'll believe that, and then, thanks to our advanced programming, you're set up to win as much as you want. And when you're sick of winning, wasn't that supposed to happen to all of us? Guess it didn't happen. You can just walk away and leave them alone. The classic, hey, where'd everyone go? Gag. Here's how this bit works. Explain to the chump that recently there was a cheating scandal at the International Rock, Paper, Scissors Championship. It involved what's called hand watching. Players were watching their opponent's hand determining what sign they were starting to throw, and milliseconds later, throwing the sign that would win. You can also explain that 
people have cheated in other ways. Just throw anything you want. You know, the International Rock Paper Scissors Association had to figure out how to prevent cheating, and technology was the solution. Instead of hand gestures, we now use VR controllers. When the voice says three, two, one, go, you press two or more buttons for rock, no buttons for paper, and one button for scissors. The movements are so similar as to be indistinguishable. It's the fairest way to play because I can't get a glimpse of what you're going to throw until you've thrown it. It's absolutely impossible to cheat. You see your choice animated on screen and a computer tally keeps perfect score. Let's play a few games. Ready up? Now you play, you know, legitimately for a while. When you're ready to start winning streak, you quickly pull the controller trigger three times. Now the game will auto play for you, starting with the next match. We've rigged the game so that the fraction of a second they think the button push is being processed, the program sneaks you in with the winning move. It's cheating exactly the same way you told them the system would prevent. This is the kind of scam that really pleases us. Enjoy it for a while, then leave. The game will keep playing for you. And the longer the play, the more they lose. Now you're winning all the time and you're not even there. Eventually they'll get discouraged and finally they'll give up and take off the headset. They won't know what hit them. They'll be all alone. Just a sad loser with no one to play with. Perfect. They know you're laughing at them, but you're gone. Please use your absence wisely. Flirt with someone the chump loves. Or <laughs> crazy glue live bats with the windshield of their car. Come on. We've given you a few precious minutes to pull off the prank of a lifetime. We only ask you one thing in return. Document. Put it online. Never let them forget. <laughs> right. See how much of that I can remember. We'll try it from the uh, the chumps view. Welcome to Virtual Rochambeau from the official Las Vegas Rock Paper Scissors Professional Rochambeau Association. The O L V R P S P R A, or Olive Rips Prop, as we say for short. There are a lot of theories on how to win at Rochambeau. Some play the game, some play the opponent, and some play theoretically or mathematically. When we moved this game onto a virtual playing field, we took away reading the eyes of your opponent, and we also took away the possibility of cheating. Good trade off. No more sideways half papers ready to change to rock or scissors. We don't know your strategy, but we know you're going to play fair. You know the rules. Rock beats scissors, scissors beat paper, and paper beats rock. You'll have a count of three to figure out what your opponent will throw and to throw what will beat him or her. You select by the number of buttons you push down at once. To select paper, don't hold down any buttons at all. Just flat out nothing. To select scissors, hold down one button. Snip, snip, snip. And to select rock, hold down two or more buttons. Make a fist. May the best controller win. Ready. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Rah. Ready. Three, two, one, go. 
ready. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Ready. 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 Three, two, one, go. Nice. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh no. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Nice. Right, let's try another bit. So ESP and telekinesis test. Let's go for that. One of the best ways to turn an intelligent person into a sucker is to convince them they have superpowers. It's something most everyone wants to believe. That's why fortune tellers often tell their clients that clients have psychic powers. It softens their brains. In this gag, you convince the chumps they have a superpower called psychokinesis. They can move objects with their minds. Uh, no, Teller, we need them to look even stupider than that. You start with a little ESP card warm-up. Have them put on the headset. They'll see Teller showing them some ESP cards. He'll shuffle them and hold up their backs to the chump one at a time. We'll ask them to say aloud what they think each card is. Circle, X, triangle, square. The moment they give their answers, you cue in the choice. Hit the buttons shown and cue the chump's chosen card. But until it turns around the virtual ESP card, they've got it just right. Their brains soften when they start to believe in their superpowers. Time for the big leap, psychokinesis. Set up a chair and a table like this. Someone nearby hide a surprise, a bowl of cooked spaghetti, a handful of cold mashed potatoes, a Crisco, even um, shredded paper towel. Maybe you can think of something even more icky. <laughs> but have it over there by the side. The most disgusting thing you can think of. Whatever that is, that's up to you. The chump will follow the instructions and set the controller on the table. Key in the controller they set down, then silently pick it up and put it somewhere else in the play area. We'll invite the chump to move the controller with his mental powers. They'll move the controller through the air and then, in their mind, move it to where you put the real controller now. They'll then be instructed to pick it up. After they've picked it up, place the disgusting surprise right where the controller was. The chump will follow our directions and set the controller back on the table. This time, 
when he tries to pick up the controller, he'll be in for a big, disgusting surprise. <laughs> By the way, uh, once you set it up, I, I put my hands on his shoulders to feel his vibes, but really to show that I couldn't possibly be doing what I'd already done. All right, let's have a wee shot of what that would look like. I think that's the last bit in Unfair. Hey, chump, we're Penn and Teller, and we know a thing or two about scams. Want to find out if you got the real skills to cheat in a casino using only your mind? You know, ESP, telekinesis. I hate to ruin the ending for you, but you don't. No one does. But we'll test you fair and square. And if you're the one person with the real goods, we'll bankroll you on a trip to Vegas. Just promise not to play our Penn and Teller slot machine, okay? Deal? Here is the ESP test. That's extra sensory perception. You can't see it, hear it, feel it, smell it, or taste it, but you still know it. Except you won't. You're going to fail, and we're going to go home. Teller has four ESP cards he'll hold up, and you should guess what each one is. Yeah, we know it's easy for the computer to cheat if you guess with a controller. Just say your choice out loud so you'll remember what you said and won't be tempted to lie to yourself. If you tell the truth to yourself, you can then tell us. We'll take your word. The card teller is holding will be one of these four. Triangle, X, circle, or square. Again, that's triangle, X, circle, or square. All right, let's get on with it. Teller will hold up a card and see what it feels like to you. Say it so you won't cheat yourself. Teller, hold up the first card. Okay, Teller, turn it around. Really? It's pretty easy to just say that you were right, but really? Really? If you're lying, you won't feel good about yourself. <laughs> we'll believe you, but it's probably just a lucky guess. Statistically, you've got a 25% chance of being correct, right? So do it again. Turn. Okay, Teller, turn it around. Okay, one more time again. Okay, Teller, turn it around. It's pretty easy to lie to a machine, but you know <laughs> the truth in your heart. If you really nailed it, we'll do some more ESP tests for you later. And if you're really not lying, we'll give you an email address where you can write to us to have us test you in person. If you're not lying, this could be a big deal. I mean, no kidding. Okay, let's test telekinesis. This is also on our system. Teller set up a little obstacle course for this test. We'll use the VR headset to focus your thoughts, but you're really going to try to move the real controller. We can track the real controller and show you a VR representation. It'll help you focus. The VR is just to help you channel your real power if you have it. You're trying to move the real thing in the real world. Here's what I need from you. Place your controller in front of you. If you want to cheat, it's pretty easy. Just pick up the controller and move it around the hoops you see in the VR. We can track it but we can't be sure you kept the VR hat on. Please be honest and try to do it for real. It's not fun cheating us, it's, it's too easy. Of course, if you really do this, which you won't, we'll quit our little magic show and start a religion around you. And now, using all your focus, stare at the VR controller. Try to imagine it coming off the ground, floating in the air.
All right. Whoa, that's impressive how you can pick up the controller and move it. We are very doubtful you're doing that with your mind. <laughs> We're disappointed that you cheated. But if you are doing it with your mind, get the controller through the hoops. <laughs> oh, back, 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 back. <laughs> okay, we like to pretend to be open. Right? If you and your friend didn't cheat this, if you're really not cheating, if you really got this far and you're really using the VR to focus your energy in the real world, well, this is serious stuff. Try it once more. If you really did it, use that email address and let's get serious. Oh, we think you're cheating. Last time, show us your gift. Sit the controller down in front of you. If you're not cheating, and you are, let's see how it goes. Really try. Good. Now take a deep breath and work your real magic. Tell her, bring in the course. Uh, well, no. Is there something to do to trigger it, or is he just giving me a lot of time to move it somewhere else? Hmm. No. <laughs> I can't get any further back than that. Mm. Dun, dun. Oh well. I think I'm gonna need to recalibrate because I'm too close to it. No. I'm pulling all sorts of shapes here just to try and get this through. Come on. Uh, I 
think I'm gonna actually have to restart this one. No, this one is not for happening. Oh, I oh, can't get that. Uh, I'll set right forward. I'll try that. Nice. I can't remember where it is in real life. I'll put it on the table though. There we go. Wow. So go get that control. We think you cheated, but but if you didn't <laughs> we cheated! <laughs> we got you! Yeah, 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 yeah! Yeah! <laughs> you should never, ever trust us or your so-called friend! <laughs> oh, you did it! You were doing this all! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So these are kind of cool. You'd have to learn all the bits like that for them to work, but those are pretty good. So we try unkind. You be Houdini. Yubi Udini is about experiencing the real thrill of death-defying escape without the real death. Unlike most of the bits we dream up, this is not about cheating your friends. This one you can play alone for good old-fashioned fun. The fun of panicked, claustrophobic drowning. Trust us, it's a blast, <laughs> like VR Gitmo. And because Yubi Houdini's got no crooked elements, it's a good one for your friends to play to lull them into a false sense of security before pulling out your big scam. To get the most gut-wrenching terror out of this game, whoever's playing Houdini should stand with hands and feet together. Tie something around Houdini's ankles. You take more time doing that yourself. Then take the safety cord of one controller and put both of Houdini's wrists through the loop. With bondage, the sky is always the limit, but you'll be pleasantly surprised by how much this adds to your visceral panic. Pay attention to the instructions and try really holding your breath every time your virtual head goes under the virtual water. Of course, if you fall down and break something or suffocate from voluntarily breath holding, we bear no responsibility for your self-destructive falling. That's it. Play the game. Either sit back and watch your chump struggle to hold their breath and escape before the time runs out, maybe flick a little water on them, or play it yourself. In that case, you just drool while you're gasping. <laughs> All right, let's give that a try. This bet can be played without a chump. Good evening. We are Penn and Teller, and it is our pleasure to present to you a little water torture chamber act called Houdini, named after our backstage Wi-Fi, which is named after the escapologist Harry Houdini. Watching cheating magicians pretend to do Houdini stunts is not a tribute. A real tribute would be to truly demonstrate how hard his stunts were by taking a random person who had no idea what they were doing and plop him or her into this claustrophobic box of nightmares. <laughs> That's where the person behind us comes in. They're getting ready now as I speak. First, binding the hands together. This is optional, but for the full experience, we recommend it. The straps of the controllers are perfect for this. So if his or her hands fit, they're putting one of the straps around both wrists. Handcuffs work wonders here, if they're around. And if any of you don't have handcuffs around your home, consider them a wise investment to make your life more exciting. Now that our volunteer is ready, 
tease. In a few moments, this aquatic torture chamber of death will be filled to the top with water. To escape, you must break open each lock by finding the correct key. Place each key with its matching lock and turn the key to unlock it. Hold your breath and imagine you're drowning. <laughs> nice. It's a tough one. <laughs> like a fish, you know, with hands and not able to breathe underwater like a fish. That's more like a human or something. <laughs> Don't forget to hold your breath. Great job. Don't know that one. Mm. Oh no, I see it. Hot dog, look at them go. With just the slightest hint of brain scramble, I consider that a win for us. Way to go, Teller. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Penn and Teller, and I am so thankful we avoided having yet another accident on stage. Please give a big round of applause to Teller, my partner, for being a true hero and coming through when it counts. A real lifesaver that Teller is, right? Oh, yeah. And to our wonderfully willing participant for surviving the bone-chilling act we like to call Houdini. <laughs> Is that one survivable? Maybe if I'm faster I can do that. Let me try that again. Our pen and teller, and it is our pleasure to present to you a little water torture chamber act called Houdini, named after our backstage Wi Fi, which is named after the escapologist Harry Houdini. Watching cheating magicians pretend to do Houdini stunts is not a tribute. A real tribute would be to truly demonstrate how hard his stunts were by taking a random person who had no idea what they were doing and plop him or her into this claustrophobic box of nightmares. That's where the person behind us comes in. They're getting ready now as I speak. First, binding the hands together. This is optional, but for the full experience, we recommend it. The straps of the controllers are perfect for this. So if his or her hands fit, they're putting one of the straps around both wrists. Handcuffs work wonders here, if they're around. And if any of you don't have handcuffs around your home, consider them a wise investment to make your life more exciting. Now that our volunteer is ready, tease! In a few moments, this aquatic torture chamber of death will be filled to the top with water. To escape, you must break open each lock by finding the correct key. Place each key with its matching lock and turn the key to unlock it. Hold your breath and imagine you're drowning. Great job! Look at 
good. I'd want to go there. No, folks, even if they make it out of this restricting <laughs> human aquarium with just the slightest hint of brain scramble, I consider that a win for us. Way to go, Teller. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Penn and Teller, and I am so thankful we avoided having yet another accident on stage. Please give a big round of applause to Teller, my partner, for being a true hero and coming through when it counts. A real lifesaver, that Teller is, right? Oh, yeah. And to our wonderfully willing participant for surviving the bone-chilling act we like to call Houdini. Close. Down to the last one. I'll maybe come back to that. Hey, let's go for quality egg control. Hey, Teller, you're getting pretty good at this game. See, he's playing a quick <laughs> reflex game that has him smashing virtual eggs at an egg sorting plant. So you just, uh... Nice, enjoy. That, huh? See you later. it's so easy. It doesn't even need to be a raw egg. You can use a wet wad of paper towel, a plate of spaghetti, or even a coffee creamer filled with disfiguring deadly corrosive acid. It's all <laughs> up to you. This bit also takes a little hand-eye coordination on your part to pull it off, but if you love video games, this will be no problem, and it makes it more fun. Step one, make sure your chump is sitting in a... Oh, you don't table. have to do that. Thanks, Step though. Step two, set one controller on the table and press the indicated button to calibrate the position and height of the table. Step three, get your chump to position and make sure the table feels right in relation to what they're seeing in VR. Explain to the chump they won't need the controllers for this game. The system is using audio triangulation to track the chump's play. For that to work, while playing, they need to slap the table pretty hard to make a loud enough noise. Oh, I love that part. <laughs> Hold the trigger when you're ready to start the game. Step four. Once the game starts, the rules are spelled out for the chump. But here's where your video game playing skills come into play. You need to grab a controller, and every time the chump smacks the table, you pull the trigger. Be careful not to pull the trigger when they don't smack. The best way to do this is to not watch the chump, but just listen. When you hear a smack, pull the trigger. You might want to encourage the chump to hit the table harder if your timing is off. Harder, Teller, harder! Step five, now for the fun part. As they play, take note of where in the middle of the table he smacks for the center eggs. A timer at the top of the screen will count down from 60 seconds. When the timer reaches zero, virtual eggs will stop appearing in the middle of the table, giving you about 10 seconds to set the surprise right in the middle of the table. All right, so we'll pretend to be the chump. That won't be hard.
Farms where the chickens are fresh and the vegetables are always happy. Sorry, we aren't here in the barn with you. We don't even like the smell of virtual cow manure, and we're afraid there might be some cyber bird flu virus. Here at PT Farms, we've been experimenting with genetically modified chickens. As Teller likes to say, GMO boy. And these lovely half chickens, half creepy stuff that Teller doesn't want you to know, lay the best gosh darn eggs around most of the time. But like the rest of us, sometimes weird stuff comes out of their butts. Della's working on fixing that on the chickens. But for right now, we need your help sorting out the good eggs from the weird stuff. Let's try it. When a good egg pops up, leave it there. Just do nothing. A little trap door will open and it'll get shipped out to one of our dozens of happy customers. Try it out. If a rotten egg or something weird rolls down the chute, smack it. Go ahead. Exactly. If it's not a good egg, smack it. To make this more fun, you'll earn a point if you let a good egg fall through a trap door or smash anything they lay that isn't a good egg. If anything else happens, you'll lose a point. Now, let's sort us some eggs. We're on a tight schedule. Sort everything before your time is up. Get to work. Immersion therapy demo. Alright. We know what you're thinking. Sure, this VR stuff is fun, but what good is it if I can't use it to traumatize somebody who suffers from arachnophobia? <laughs> we got some good news for you. This will scare the living bejesus out of anyone, and the true arachnophobe will never forgive you. Never. This is such fun to play, fun to watch, and brings the creepiest experience possible from the virtual world into the real world. Do we deliver or what? The program is plenty horrifying on its own, but if you're willing to do some extra prep, you can increase the effect to unending living nightmare. Get a couple of plastic spiders. Put some glue dots or double stick tape or loops of tape on the underside. Set them out of sight and you are ready to go. This one is really bad. You should know we, we kind of feel a little bad about doing this one. How great is that? 
Tell your chump if you've downloaded some software that psychiatrists are using to help people deal with phobias. In virtual reality, the patients immerse themselves in their worst nightmares. But because there's no physical danger, they can practice controlling their fears, separating silly, unjustified phobias from real threats. It's bullshit psychiatry, but it's almost believable. In fact, there's probably really some quack doing cruel nut stuff like this and getting grants for it. This will only work with someone if they are not wearing long sleeves. Some of them take off their, their outer shirt. They might save the shirts from tears of fear and rage. But they won't thank you for that. See, they deserve everything they get. They'll see spiders of various sizes dropping down from above. The chump will swing the controller to squash the animated spiders. Encourage them to look up and around to make sure they see all the spiders, especially the ones on the floor, which can be easy to miss. <laughs> you want them moving around and turning around a fair amount. As they do this, pick up your spiders and wait. At some point, press the button and they'll get an error message saying they've stepped out of the play area. Say, oh, 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 you've gone out of bounds. Take one spider in each hand, grab them by the forearms near the wrists. As you say, let me get you back into position here, can I? <laughs> As you're moving them, press the spiders onto their arms or they will stick to their skin. They won't feel them, they just feel you holding on to them, guiding them into place. This is perfect misdirection and perfect justification for touching them. They won't even remember you touched them. Then go back to the keyboard and tell them to take one or two steps forward. And when they do, press the button again. The playing screen will come back on. It'll seem to them like it came back on because they stepped back to the play area. Get them, Teller. Get that big one. Get that one over there. Get them. Get them. Get them. Make sure the chump kills the big spider. When the big spider dies, the ground spiders will stop coming. And a giant will descend and charge at the chump. Then the game will end. Here, the chump takes the headset off, then say, I'll take the controllers. When they go to hand them to you, they'll see the spiders on their wrists. Mission accomplished. Just try to stay out of the splash zone. You know, we probably shouldn't have done this one, but... <laughs> It's what we do. Nice. All right, let's have a shot at this one. Virtual reality is used primarily for entertainment, but preliminary psychological studies show that virtual reality may be useful in dealing with some phobias. By immersing the patient in his or her fears safely in VR, that safe zone can expand into the real world. The following is for healthcare professionals. For education purposes only, it should not be used on patients. It will demonstrate to you how simple and effective this new therapy can be. We hope you'll sign up for a free trial in your own practice. Let's imagine your patient has a debilitating fear of spiders. So we create a safe fantasy environment where the patient can experience the fear while knowing there is no genuine danger. Please take the role of patient and try it for yourself. You're in a dark forest. You're holding two rolled up newspapers. Use them to swat the computer generated spiders as they fall out of these trees. Go ahead, give it a try.
Nice. All right, let's try the last one in Unkind. High Rise Grime Fighter. In Desert Boss, we give you the chance to see how, thanks to virtual reality, you could do a job you'd never want to do. A horizontal trip across endless flat desert. In this one, we go vertical with another bad job you don't want to do. High Rise Grime Fighters. If you have a fear of heights, well, it's going to be really exciting. <laughs> You're going to play a window cleaner on a scaffold dangling from a skyscraper, going up floor by floor where you perform a menial task. Now, of course, buses crash and you can die driving them, but you can't just free fall knowing you're about to splat. This is definitely more exciting mind-numbing work. As you clean the window on each floor, you'll see little references to stuff that we've done, tricks and images. As you get higher and higher, the rooms and music become more creepy with a nice punchline. It's a scary murder mystery kind of thing. Now, when Teller did this, we were first trying it out, he knew it was coming. And still, he screamed and fell on the floor. But he's dramatic about things like that. <laughs> it's a great thing to play, and it's a great thing to watch someone else play after you've done it. You might want to get right near your friend when you see that look up message to catch them if they lose their balance. I got you, 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 I got you. It's one way to get a date to fall into your arms. We're here to help. <laughs> All right, let's go for it. High rise grain fighters. Nice. Hey man, how you doing? Good to see you, Danny. Ah, not bad, thanks. How did you get on? Are you alright? Is it alright being back at work? Just cleaning some windows. <laughs> Not doing a great job here, right? <laughs> uh, right, let me recalibrate. Let's see if I can make that. Ah, true, yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> ah, your stream was good as well. It's a shame when other people are not following stuff properly. It's it's frustrating more than anything else. Like, okay, let's, what's in here? Terrifying monkey head. Bit of vertigo up here. Pen's double bass. <laughs> he did say there was wee kind of references to 
Pen and Tower mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. I forgot it was in the stream. <laughs> ah, it was good, right? I'll need to get on. I'll need to get a shot of that at some point. The double bass. Check that. Nice. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. That made me feel a bit weird. <laughs> oh, that was me hitting something in real life. I don't actually know what I hit there. Hey, uh, so this is Penn and Teller. Uh, frankly, unfair, unkind, unnecessary, and underhanded. Um, and it's kind of, it's like, they used to do kind of VHS videos back in the day. Uh, which were like cruel tricks for dear friends. And it was like a video that would tell you how to kind of play funny tricks on your pals. And this, it's kind of like that, but for VR. So there's wee sections where they'll tell you how to do something and then you stick your pal in it and then you can kind of be wide to your pal when they're in the VR like knowingly wide with the game uh, but because I'm just myself I'm the chump <laughs> yeah yeah uh, this one is a bit I'm trying really hard not to look down as well. <laughs> right, let's see what's in here this time. Oh, there's blood dripping from the sea one. That's good. <laughs> okay, what have we got in here? That's the pistols from the billet catch. Uh, there's the king animal traps, the trap. happening in here. Bad mattress. That. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> oh that's bad for me. <laughs> oh <t> <laughs> Right. <laughs> See, we got unnecessary now. The VR prototype. Right, let's go. Ah, oh, I need to be wide down hey, now. Want to immorally swindle money from your chump friends using the power of virtual reality? Of course you don't. That would be immoral and highly illegal. We are obligated to admonish you not to use this game to make yourself richer. Just don't do it. But if you were a bad person and wanted to make money off chumps, you'd tell them you'd invented a 
cutting edge VR prototype that can track hands without expensive to produce motion controllers. When their eyes light up with dollar signs, you'd offer to do a demo. You'd put the headset on the greedy bastard. Then you'd tell the chump to make movements with their hands while you secretly follow their movements with the controller. That's it. We won't say it works like a charm because charms don't work. And this does. It'll seem miraculously, but more importantly, it'll seem like you've got an invention that's going to make a bundle for you and a few wise investors. If your chump asks how an idiot like you pulled off the next major breakthrough in VR, just do what all billionaires in tech do. Make up some random jive with phrases like heat signatures and motion algorithms and make sure you throw in the words emergent and social. Ka-ching! <laughs> Remember, this is supposed to be a prototype, not even at beta stage. This is alpha stage, and you are soon to be the rich alpha dog. When you start the trick, you press the trigger to log in. And your first prototype, which will show a long, boring loading screen with no mention of Penn & Teller, you get all the credit. The painfully dull weight sells the idea that a person like you did this on your own. When it finally boots up, your chump will see a barren, gridded room with some calming public domain music plays. It looks ugly, but if it worked, it'd be worth zillions, and your fish will know that. Now ask your chump to make fists with both hands. Hold them out in front of them. Once they do, press the indicated button on each controller to make those fish show up. Get it? The computer isn't seeing their hands, you are. You're just watching them. This isn't new technology, this is just eyes. Technology that otters have and otters aren't rich. Once you click where the fish are, by looking at them, ask the chump to slowly move their fists around. As they do, follow the fist. Using your eyes. <laughs> if they move too quickly, you just follow, just indi hit the indicated button to slow down the victim's movements. Whenever something goes wrong, blame it on the hardware, just like a real tech mogul. <laughs> After some time watching your chump marveling at their hands like an idiot, ask them to hold up any number of fingers. When they do, press the trigger on that hand as many times they have fingers up. For example, for two fingers, press the trigger two times. <laughs> this is so stupid. But it, if you really found a way to make your computer do it cheaply with consumer equipment, you'd be rich, rich, I tell you rich, fabulously wealthy. <laughs> the fingers will show up on that hand after a short amount of time. You can press that trigger again, to reset the number of fingers shown in the hand. Here comes the payoff. I mean the part where a bad person would make money. After this impressive and totally fake demo of your groundbreaking technology, tell your chump you only need 10 grand to complete the prototype and sell it to, let's say, Gearbox. Why not shoot for the stars? For 10 grand, the chump gets in on the ground floor. It'll be like buying part of Starbucks back when the mermaid was still topless. You see, that's great, Seattle. Your dear friend just needs to write a check right that second. Tell them they have to decide today. It's like a gym membership. Even a chump will realize that money can be made with VR that doesn't need controllers. That's how easy it is. Using this to really rip off someone for 10 grand is illegal, immoral, and send us our half. <laughs> this, is, this is in stage money. Did you get real money? <laughs> what did you think, like you went to the cashier? <laughs> he, he's an idiot. <laughs> it's real money. <laughs> nice. All right. I'll be the chump then. For the VR prototype.
Some of these are pretty good, though. None of my pals would fund this. <laughs> They'd be giving me no money. Right. not going to end, is it? Do I just need to quit out? Alright, let's go back to the backstage menu. <laughs> nice. Right. Is that all of those ones? So we're going for... Virtual pen and tellers, cups and balls. This bit does not have a tutorial video. So like the play option to experience the entire bit from start to finish. Nice. Can be played without a chump. But I'm a chump though. Nice. Oh. 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 Oh, it crashed. Sorry guys, I'll jump back on. Uh, an error has occurred in the following application. Pen and Teller VR, frankly unfair, unkind, unnecessary and underhanded. Checking the error status. And it can't even check that. That's not great. Oh, it's actually having...